previous video we talked about the suspension system without taking the uh, without taking the damping effect into consideration but uh, in practical cases the damping is always present in the suspension system as we all know now uh, this damping is done by the shock absorbers now the name says that they absorb the shock uh, they absorb the shock but however uh, in uh, in actual case what happens is that when uh, when a vehicle under uh, when a vehicle falls into a pit or uh, faces a bump the, uh, there are oscillations in the uh, suspension system that oscillation is damped by those shock absorbers they do not uh, absorb the shock directly but they damp they absorb the oscillations and hence uh, decrease the frequency of the oscillations of the vehicle now it is very important for a vehicle to uh, to reach up to an optimum uh, damping effect so uh, if uh, if the damping effect is quite more the oscillations will not be damped properly and hence uh, there will be you know much of a the passenger comfort will get decreased on the other hand if the damping effect is too much then the stiffness will increase of the or the entire overall suspension system and hence again the passenger comfort will uh, be very much uh, less so it is a very important decision to come up to an optimum level of the damping effect uh, as we know that the suspension system are uh, classified into you know mainly classified into uh, independent and depend uh, sorry independent and dependent systems but uh, uh, talking about the independent systems they are further classified into active suspension and uh, passive suspension now uh, <coughs> the typical the traditional suspension system as we all know the spring and the uh, the damper that is uh, that is uh, taken into the passive uh, that is taken into passive suspension system whereas in active suspension system the the response of the suspension system is uh, is calculated by the electronic module as we all know the ecm the electronic control module of the vehicle it controls the suspension system in the active suspension in the active suspension system now why do we need such a classification of active and passive so when a vehicle uh, when any vehicle undergoes a bump or a pit the damping that takes place uh, the suspension system uh, compresses and then rebounds when a vehicle falls into a pit then it the first of all it goes downwards uh, let, uh, take uh, take for example it is facing a pit so there will be compression of the suspension system in the first case after the compression there will be a rebound which will be expansion of the spring now when the vehicle when the suspension system undergoes the compression the damping effect uh, taking place is not as same as that in the rebound condition so it is very important for a vehicle that the damping effect is given in such a way that it takes into consideration both the effects the compression and the rebound now if we talk about the passive suspension system the damping effect is controlled by the orifices the, uh, the you know for example take for example the telescope uh, telescopic uh, suspension system there are orifices present which uh, take care of the damping effect and whereas in the active suspension the electronic control module takes care of the uh, the damping effect in the entire suspension system as i've written here this is the transfer function that uh, this is the transfer function that controls the entire suspension system whereas uh, in passive the uh, the traditional is used the spring and the damping effect in this video we'll, uh, we are only going to talk about the passive suspension system the active suspension i will cover it in the cover it in the next video now first of all uh, understand this this is the stiffness ratio uh, stiffness ratio is the ratio of the tire st uh, stiffness and the stiffness of the uh, suspension now uh, if uh, take if the uh, stiffness ratio is quite less that means the it is mostly used for the uh, for the high performance cars for example if the stiffness uh, stiffness ratio is 5 then it is uh, more used in the uh, in the high performance cars whereas for car, in luxury cars where passenger comfort is very much taken into into consideration uh, <coughs> uh, stiffness ratio around 20 is taken into consideration is uh, into you know the calculation and all now uh, to make it simpler uh, let us consider the tires uh, the stiffness of the tires is going to remain constant it is the stiffness of the spring that we need to vary the designer's part is to uh, change the uh, come up to the optimum value of the stiffness of the spring i mean the suspension system so if the uh, <coughs> this remains constant the tire stiffness remains constant it is the 
stiffness of the suspension that he needs to change if it is stiffness is quite high the ratio will uh, come low and if the ratio if the stiffness is quite low then the ratio will uh, it is the vice versa now uh, come into this graph uh, on the x axis on the x axis it is the root mean square value of the suspension travel and uh, on the y axis it is the root mean square of the vertical acceleration now first of all understanding these two terms the suspension travel the suspension travel is when uh, quite obvious that when a vehicle undergoes any uh, any un uh, non uniformity in the road or any pit or any hindrance then there will be compression and rebound the total travel of that suspension is uh, obviously the sus suspension travel this term is a uh, quite a new uh, vertical acceleration vertical acceleration uh, vertical acceleration is uh, the pace at which uh, the rate at which you undergo that uh, you know that shock if you are falling into a pit at quite a high speed then you will uh, face a very much jerk and that is the vertical acceleration how fast you are uh, uh, the uh, you know the jerk is experienced so uh, as you can see now this uh, if we come uh, towards uh, this side there will be the, the, the damping effect is increasing Whereas the uh, uh, this part is of the low damping effect. This is the these are the values of R K. Like I have said, uh, that is the suspension. Uh, sorry, the stiffness ratio. Take for example five, uh, which I talked about the high performance cars. The stiffness is quite less. The sti uh, sorry, the stiffness of the suspension is quite high. So the graph will go like this. If the damping effect is quite less, then the suspension travel will will be uh, high, and also the vertical acceleration. In the previous uh, video, I had already said that if the damping effect is quite uh, less and the sus uh, suspension stiffness is also quite uh, uh, less, then there will be also quite much of a, a oscillation experience and uh, less passenger comfort. On the other hand, as you can see, this is the optimum part and again it is increasing. So if we uh, damping is increased too much also, th that means the stiffness is increasing. As a result, again the vertical acceleration is increasing, but the suspension travel will be quite less. Now, this suspension travel is the overall, you know, uh, uh, overall tra travel of the suspension. Uh, that is the travel of the spring. So, if the spring is traveling quite less, that means the damping is quite high, and the vertical ac acceleration, in other words, the jerk you will be exper uh, experiencing will be quite high. So, uh, the optimum optimum value needs to be determined when uh, designing a suspension system so these are the different graphs for uh, different values of stiffness ratios uh, these are the uh, hypothetical uh, values now the entire range cannot be used in the practical cases hence the this much part uh, is taken into actual case the from here yeah, the the depression of the graph till here the this is the actual part in which which is uh, practical enough to take into calculations this graph uh, which I, uh, which i have shown here is for uh, uh, this is the uh, ratio of uh, unsprung mass to sprung mass now if i if i explain this uh, this is basically uh, mass of uh, unsprung mass uh, this is unsprung mass upon uh, sprung mass so basically uh, if the value of is uh, 0.15 that means the unsprung mass is 15% of sprung mass obviously for different values of uh, unsprung mass the graphs will be different but uh, this I have shown is just the general idea of uh, how the graph will be so this is uh, the, uh, this is the value for uh, this is the graph for the passive suspension now uh, just giving you a hint of uh, the active suspension the active suspension will be obviously uh, as it is taking command from the ECU uh, it will be uh, having more efficiency and the graph will be better and different from this graph uh, which I'll be covering in the next uh, next video so this is quite an idea of uh, how to determine the damp damping effect given that the uh, suspension given that the stiffness of the spring is uh, already calculated and uh, yeah uh, this is basically what a designer takes into consideration the designer has uh, the freedom to ma mainly determine the freedom of the suspension uh, the stiffness ratio and this the mass of the 
mass of the uh, ratio of unsprung mass of unsprung mass and the stiffness ratio these are the two main uh, values the designer needs to calculate the damping effect and hence from the graph the optimum damping, damping effect is uh, taken into calculations given that the uh, suspension is active or passive thank you